Welcome to the Going North Podcast, where you will be informed, encouraged, and empowered to embrace your dreams and advance in life through authorship. I'm your host, best-selling author of the book, Stay the Course, and certified leadership trainer, Dom Brightman. Be sure to check out the goods and services from every guest, as well as the host himself, yours truly. Now let the fun begin. Today's episode is sponsored by book number two from Dominic Dom Brightman, Stay the Course, The Elite Performer's Seven Secret Keys to Sustainable Success. It is the field guide to help unleash the elite performer that is inside of you. Cop it today on Amazon.com or heading over to DomBrightman.com and snag it in book, ebook, and audiobook so that way you can take it on the go and get yourself on the go to your northbound success. And today on the High Life Real Builder for Authors, known as GMP, the great, glorious, and glamorous, is the Going North Podcast. We got another super special, awesome human for you today, my friends. That's right, indeed. Thanks to the big, small world of the internet. Folks may remember this wonderful guest today because, my goodness, or at least today's guest in particular was a referral from a past guest, the wonderful lady with all the best glasses in business known as Jennifer Glass herself. That's right, indeed. She's Jenny from the Business Block, indeed. And she hooked me up with today's super special, awesome guest who joined the business of immortality because my man is an MBA, baby. That's right, an MBA who loves to enjoy reading, exercising, watching sports, and hanging out with his friends. And he's now a fellow podcast host with over 125 episodes of the Deep Voice Man <laughs> podcast today so let's give it up for the ljl himself the one and only luke gene lewis how you doing today luke i'm doing great um thank you so much for having me on as a guest for your show i'm a little bit nervous but also excited at the same time and uh you know i love your show <laughs> i love what you do it you know giving a platform for uh, a fellow podcaster like myself but in general you know to have a platform to showcase published authors uh, who are trying to promote their book. I think it's amazing. So I, I want to give a shout out to you. And um, I'm definitely a fan of your show. <laughs> hey, man. Well, I appreciate it, man. Definitely, man. Because like, dude, it's, you're well, <laughs> in your case, I appreciate the choir because it can be uphill at times with the podcast, with everything productive yeah. and marketing, which is never ending. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. So my goodness, man, as with all introductions, they're not allowed to be three and a half days long, and I probably only covered maybe two hours of what you do to help out the planet. <laughs> it's your first time on the show. So mind giving the listeners a bit of your backstory and how you got to where you are today, my man? Sure, absolutely. So um, I guess it all starts with my parents. My parents were born and raised in, uh, in Haiti. Obviously, as we all know, Haiti is a very poor country. It uh, has its challenges. And uh, they immigrated to this country, to the United States, uh, back in the 70s. So, you know, they were obviously looking for a better life. And uh, that's when they, they had me as a child. I was, I was born and raised in New York City. Uh, very, very thankful for that. Uh, New York City is the capital of the world. <laughs> There's a lot of great things happening here in New York. So, um, you know, obviously growing up in, in New York City, I always had a fascination with business because uh, New York is the financial capital of the world. And so I, uh, I went to college uh, where I, I majored in business. And uh, after college, I worked for a little while in sales. And then I decided to go to business school to get my MBA from uh, Baruch College, uh, a wonderful uh, institution. And, and from there uh, in Baruch, I studied uh, a lot of different things about business, uh, marketing, uh, entrepreneurialism, and whatnot. And I got my MBA in management. And uh, afterwards, I started uh, working in sales because sales and marketing was something that always appealed to me. And uh, after a couple of years in sales, uh, I realized that it wasn't the best fit for, uh, for my personality and for myself in general. So I decided to uh, switch over to something else. I decided to dabble in customer service for a little while. 
Um, but then after a while, I, I realized that I wanted to be an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, excuse me, and uh, wanted to work for myself. And uh, like a lot of people, I wanted to make that leap from being an employee to being self-employed. So I uh, decided, uh, you know, on a couple different things, uh, you know, for a while, I actually owned my own laundromat for a little bit, uh, did some other stuff. And I sort of, you know, moved from failure to failure. So I sort of got to where I really uh, was achieving some measure of success as a business person. So I um, essentially what happened was I, I decided to uh, work for myself and help other business owners succeed. And what I decided to do was I wanted to help business owners uh, develop, uh, you know, acquire different types of software programs to help them grow. But I knew that if I was going to succeed, I needed a big network. And, um, you know, networking is the best way to sell, in my opinion, and I think in the opinion of others. So I, I read a life-changing book um, by a gentleman named Steve Gordon called Unstoppable Referrals. In that book, uh, he talks about the importance of uh, having your own podcast and interviewing folks as a way to build relationships and uh, as a way to expand your network. And that really appealed to me. And there were so many people who would also compliment me on, the, on my voice and say, I should do something with it, go into broadcasting, do voiceovers, do this, that, and the other thing. And I didn't know what to, you know, what to do with that. And I, you know, I would accept these compliments and and, and whatnot. But then I decided, hmm, this seems like a good idea. Why don't I start a podcast called The Deep Voice Man Show, where I get to interview folks uh, that I want to interview with, that I, I, that I, I want to build a relationship with. And, I, and it, just, it just was a big hit from there. And so I, uh, <laughs> I've had success. I've interviewed over 120 people. And I have listeners to the show. Um, uh, from all over the world and it's an audio only show so people can listen to it while they're you know driving while they're cooking while they're changing diapers cleaning whatnot and um, you know, i'm just kind of blown away by the success of the show and and the type of guests i've been able to interview so it's it's been amazing and uh, it's been a great way to expand my network and uh, you know, networking is so important for me because I'm, I'm naturally an introvert, although a lot of people are surprised when they hear that. <laughs> but the podcast has helped me to put myself out there and to help, and it has helped me to connect with folks because it, what it does is it, it helps me to build relationships by providing value first, by you know, offering to have people come on the show to tell their story and to, and to give uh, folks uh, a platform to promote themselves. Uh, but, you know, having a podcast was only half of the equation. The other part was that you needed to have a, uh, a book. You needed to write a customer attraction book. Uh, and so I decided to uh, write my first, <laughs> write and publish my first book. It's, uh, it's called Grow Your Business uh, with Software. So I, uh, I wrote and published that book is available on uh, on my on Amazon and on my website. And um, obviously, uh, if folks want to get it on the website, it's possible they can get a free copy. Uh, all they have to say is that they know Dom, and uh, <laughs> they can get a, a free autographed copy shipped right to the door. So, um, you know, writing my first book, it, it's uh, it's exciting. When I tell people that I'm an author, they uh, you know, it's, uh, they smile very wide. Wow. You know, very few people write a book. They always talk about it, but they don't actually do it. It's not as hard as people think. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, more and more people need to join the authors club and the podcasters club. I always tell people that they should start their own podcast and, uh, and obviously to write their own book. So, um, you know, that's, uh, I'm all about podcasting and, and, and authoring, so to speak. So I, I guess that's where I'm at. You know, the book has been very helpful in uh, getting referrals. It's been very helpful in growing my business. And, uh, you know, when you combine a book with a podcast, it's like, you know, like a match in gasoline. It's, it's like, it's explosive. So it's, it's something that uh, people really need to look into. Yes. 
Ah, uh, sorry indeed, sorry indeed, sorry indeed. So much to unpack there, man. Because my goodness, my goodness, one heck of a journey indeed. It's like, man, it's like, man, like first born, first generation American from uh, having two wonderful parents all the way from Haiti. It's like, hey, maybe going through this rough time, but still some powerful people in the nation of Haiti. Like, my goodness, that's right indeed. Yeah. That's right indeed. It's a great lineage indeed. And, being able to come to the land of opportunity and take advantage and create opportunity indeed and start a laundromat. So my goodness, like going back to that, like what led you to start a laundromat? Cause that's usually not on everyone's radar at the, at first. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, a, it's weird. Um, you know, but, uh, it's funny. Uh, you know, obviously I was, I was so desperate to, you know, get in business for myself. So I was, you know, reading a lot of books and uh, I, I was going on websites and trying to see what businesses are out there for sale. And they, there was a laundry mat on the Upper East Side. And um, I'm not, I'm not going to kid you. I actually bought the, the laundry mat with credit cards, um, <laughs> which is wow. probably not the best way to buy anything. <laughs> or to buy anything. And, uh, you know, uh, but, you know, it's interesting. It's a journey. It's a learning curve. You know, you when you start a business it may fail. And, and this is very common. Uh, you know, if you study uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, like the, the, the history of the guy who founded Domino's pizza, it was, it was rough for him at first, <laughs> you know, so, uh, but uh, everyone knows what Domino's pizza is today. So um, I, I realized that um, owning a, a physical brick and mortar business is probably not the best idea. Um, it's best to own a business that is digital, we don't have to pay rent to a landlord. You don't have to pay thousands of dollars. <laughs> so, you had, uh, and, I, and so, you know, the internet's a very wonderful tool. Um, there's a lot of opportunity with the internet. And, you know, uh, there's a friend of mine who's also a fellow podcaster who Jennifer also knows, uh, D. Scott Smith. He, uh, he said that, you know, right now is the best time to be alive. And uh, I totally agree with him on that. Um, there's so many opportunities, particularly for those who have that entrepreneurial spirit. And uh, so it, it's something that people, if they want to be an entrepreneur, they, they really ought to jump on it. There's so much resources out there, so much wisdom that, that's available. You have our, our friend Jennifer R. Glass, who's a profit uh, acceleration specialist. She knows how to help business owners grow and expand their bottom line. So there's folks like her, there's books out there. So uh, if someone wants to start their own business, um, they really ought to give it a go. And, um, you know, I think since the pandemic started, it, it, there's been an explosion in entrepreneurialism. And uh, so I think a lot of people are, you know, taking that chance. Um, you know, history repeats itself very often because during the Great Depression, a lot of great businesses uh, during that crisis period, a lot of great businesses and firms were, were created and founded at that time as well. Uh, so I think a lot of people are, you know, wanting to put that, that shingle out there and wanting to be a business owner and, and work for themselves and not necessarily have to work for the man, so to speak. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely, definitely indeed. Yeah, man, you said the entrepreneurial explosion, that double E next to pandemic, because it's like uh, a lot of folks are forced to stay home and then finally put to action some of the things they may have been thinking about like with Facebook groups, like as a business tool, like those exploded out the wazoo. And thanks to them <laughs> updating the software constantly to stay ahead of the game. <laughs> and yeah. that tag everyone featured now at the top of this recording. It was like, oh crap, I joined so many groups. Let me get the hell out of all of these groups because <laughs> they keep abusing the feature. Yeah. It's like, man, it's got to really stay afloat. And my goodness, man. And you reading that book and taking that business experience and figured, all right, let me start a podcast interview business owner, man. So how's that podcast help you to grow, man? What would you consider your big three main takeaways from start growing and managing a successful podcast, my man? Well, um, the three takeaways are, are this, um, you don't want to get stuck in analysis paralysis. You just want to get started, you know, and, uh, I think that happens with podcasting. A lot of people, um, when they start a, when they think about starting a podcast, they uh, they they think they need to get a microphone. They think they need to get this kind of equipment. They think they need to get this, is that, and this, and the other thing. And it's all procrastination, all fear. You know, um, I had a colleague who once told me that, 
you know, done is better than perfect, right? And, uh, and that's so true. Uh, you just want to get started. Um, so with my podcast, it's, it's, uh, it's audio only, so there's no video. Um, and I, I like it that way. And um, so it, it makes it simpler. And I'm able to do more interviews that way, I feel. So you just really want to get started. And, and you can also get started with the podcast for free uh, with the Anchor platform, anchor.fm. Um, something that more people need to check out. Um, there's a marketing guru out there. I'm sure you've heard of. You know, his name is Seth Godin. I hope I'm saying his name right. He's bald headed, wears glasses. And he wrote the, the Purple Cow and some other books. He says that podcasting is the new blogging and that everyone should have a podcast. And I totally believe that to be true. You know, people out there that you want to connect with who know a lot of your ideal customers, right? Um, you want to have a podcast, interview them on your show and build a relationship with them because that will help you expand your bottom line. So um, again, with the podcast, you want to get started right away. You can get started tomorrow. Just do it, get it, you know, and then you can start interviewing people. Um, the second takeaway I've got from uh, that I, that I uh, got from podcasting is that um, you'd be surprised that uh, so many people will say yes, uh, even though they don't know you to, for, <laughs> to be interviewed on, on your show. It's, it's surprising. And, you know, when you think about it, you know, um, you can reach out to anyone on LinkedIn and so many people on LinkedIn are tired of, you know, these cold pitches and having people sell them stuff, but you get to go out and offer something of value to an individual. You get to build a relationship by offering them a gift by having them come on your show to, for them to promote themselves. Think about that. And you'll have people reaching out to you uh, instead of you having to reach out to them saying, hey, I want to go on the show. Can, can you have me be on the show? And so it's an amazing experience. And podcasting is a hell of fun. I'm sure a Dom would agree. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so much fun to, to, have, to do interviews and have these conversations and, and whatnot. And, you know, the more you, you do these interviews, the better you get at it. And, uh, and the more your network expands, and then you begin to get even uh, guests are even more prominent. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky to have a guest on my show who was the founder of Hydroflask, which is a very famous water bottle company. It's one of the most popular episodes. Uh, his name uh, escapes me now. No, I think it was Rosbeck, Captain Rosbeck. And he it was, a, it was a, so it was like two hours, but it was the funnest episode I ever did. The guy had so many great stories. Uh, he met so many famous people like Oprah Winfrey and Riddick Bowe and, and the Queen and all this that, and the other stuff. And so it was, it was such an amazing episode. So my second takeaway is that so many people will tell you yes. Think about that for a second. You can reach out to almost anybody, um, maybe not almost anybody, but to lots and lots of folks. And you could audit, and you can get in many cases, 90% of the time, a yes. You know, uh, so uh, that's just amazing. Think about that. You can just start a podcast and build a relationship with so many people in that way. And uh, so, um, you know, after that interview is over, um, that that it's just there's incredible feeling there, and that it, it it's just an incredible foundation for a long lasting relationship. So uh, that would be my second take takeaway. The third takeaway is that, you know, like I said before. It's great to have a podcast and have guests on, and it's not as hard as you think to start. But my third takeaway is that uh, you want to have that book, and um, you have to combine the podcast with the book. I know I sound like a broken record, but uh, the reason why books are great is because it makes it easier for people to refer you. Um, the book is like a, uh, it, the book is a tool that allows you to leverage yourself. It's like um, it's an inanimate object. It's non-threatening. The problem with the <laughs> referral process, yeah, it is. You know, it's, you know, it's it's uh, because you'd be surprised that um, so many people don't want to give you referrals because it's like handing someone off to a sales presentation, and no one likes a sales presentation or to be sold because there's 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 this implied pressure and, and whatnot. And but when you give a book to someone, um, that's a lot easier, right? People can read that book on their own time. And, uh, you know, they can buy from you when they're ready, when the time is right. You know, that book is like, a, is like a, your own salesperson, really. It's, it's, a, 
it's it's like a sales presentation. Um, and you know, books are very well respected. People generally don't throw out books; they tend to recycle them or give them away to a library or whatnot, or or sell them online. So. Uh, a book is not like a business card. A business card gets thrown in the trash, but a book is well respected. And when you say you're an author, people look at you in a different light. They view you more as an expert. And uh, so um, if you are a salesperson and you sell anything, you also want to have a, a book selling for you. You know, that book will sell for you while you're out doing the laundry, while you're cooking, cleaning, changing diapers. And uh, that book is like a, a sales presentation uh, where you don't have to be there. Um, so it's the ultimate lead generation tool. And uh, it's, uh, I think a lot more people need to understand and realize that. And it's not that hard to, to have your own book, to self-publish, as you know. And uh, so that's the thing about podcasting and a book. It, it's, it's not as hard as people think. And uh, the thing about a podcast is that uh, you, you basically, you want it to be focused on what you're interested in. Um, my understanding is that the average podcast lasts only seven episodes, which is a, a darn shame. But um, when you have a podcast with the interview format, you can have lots and lots of episodes because there's so many people. There's an infinite number of people to interview. Really, you'll, you'll have to be turning away interviews because you just don't have the time. So that's why it was easy for me to get to close to 130 interviews and counting. So um, that's the thing. And so, you know, you want to be interviewing um, promoters and, and uh, folks that uh, Steve Gordon, again, he calls them promoters. These are people who know a lot of your ideal customers. Um, so you want to find those folks. And then um, once you start a relationship with those folks, you can tell them, hey, can you go to all the people, you know, and offer them a free copy of my book? It's, uh, you know, it's a no brainer. They want to reciprocate based on what you did for them. And and, uh, you know, uh, giving your book out is, is not that hard for them to do. Now, to refer them to you uh, is tough because, you know, that referral, that introduction, it's a, it's a little tricky because you don't want to throw someone in a, into a sales presentation and, you know, getting a referral, it, it, you know, there's, a, there's an aspect of trust and, you know, are you going to take care of this person right? Because if you don't, but a book is just so harmless, right? You can just, hey, I can give someone a free copy of the book and they don't like the book, they can give it away. And, it, and that's the thing, you know, you want to have a book uh, out there promoting uh, you and what you sell. So it, it's so important. Oh yeah, definitely, man. It's definitely important, indeed. And you're so right about that. Like, I was just chuckling earlier because I was like, I've never heard anyone bring up the truth that oh, it's an inanimate object. It's just a book. Relax. Yeah, it's yeah. Not a, you're not yeah. trying to sell swamp land to people, or you're selling pet crocodiles to people. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. Listen, Dick is definitely. Just the beautiful thing about starting a podcast and even mentioning the importance of even having a book or even a product to sell, because that's really the, one of the main drivers to have a podcast is that if you have a business to really promote what you're selling, so that way you have something to promote in addition to other people. If you have an interview-based show, so that way you can generate leads, generate more sales, and build relationships with other super special awesome humans so my goodness man this wonderful book talking about growing your business with software man so my goodness man so what led you to that topic of choice of growing your business with software we're we talking something beyond the evil tool the devil known as microsoft excel or something totally different <laughs> uh, well it's uh, different from uh, excel so you know I, I was doing a lot of research on the, the best business models out there and uh, you'd be surprised. I, you know, I told you I, I did the laundromat thing. I, I've even tried MLM. I've tried drop shipping with Etsy and whatnot. And so I, I stumbled on to uh, uh, some things uh, through research. And I found that one of the best ways to build uh, a passive income, and that's something I'm very much interested in, this idea of money coming in, even though you're not working. Of course, we all would like to, to have that because obviously if you have a business and you're doing all the work, it's, it's like owning a job, but in some cases even worse, right? So you want a business that could function uh, with or without you or with little of your time involved. So uh, this idea of passive income has always appealed to me. And uh, so one of the best ways to achieve a passive income stream 
is to provide services to businesses. And, um, you know, businesses um, in particular will uh, pay a lot of money uh, for services on a monthly recurring basis. So think about that. Now, if you can sell something to businesses that they'll pay you month to month for, well, there you go. You know, if you have a, a dozen businesses paying you a few hundred dollars, uh, that adds up pretty quickly. So, um, you know, this, this idea of being a, a business helper uh, uh, really appealed to me in, in many ways. And uh, I sort of stumbled onto this uh, through the podcast because I, I interviewed a gentleman um, who's a, a major SEO wizard. And um, after the show, he told me that if you can introduce me to someone that needs SEO, I'll give you a, a large uh, commission. So I said, okay, um, I, I interviewed at the time a lot of business coaches. So I would just send all the business coaches I interviewed his way. Um, and uh, one of the business coaches actually bought his SEO services uh, for 5K, I believe the total package was. He gave me 20% 20 of, 20 of, of it. And, uh, and I saw that uh, through my PayPal account, I got over $1,000. I was like, wow, that's amazing. I didn't do any work. Um, I just uh, connected a business uh, to, with a service that they needed and collected a, quite a bit of change there. So um, that got my mind thinking, you know, that, you know, businesses will pay a lot more money for stuff than obviously a regular person will because businesses make more money than a regular person. They could deduct a lot more taxes and, and you know, and, and this and that, the other thing. So, um, all right, well, and they'll pay month to month for stuff. Uh, so I thought to myself, you know, what could I sell to businesses uh, in which I don't have to really do the work, so to speak, right? I, again, I want the income to be passive. I don't wanna be a freelancer who's doing websites for businesses, but I'm working around the clock and the clients are like your bosses at that point. So it's like, you, it's, it's like another job. So, um, the idea of selling software to businesses really appealed to me. Uh, the reason why is because software runs by itself for the most part. Um, I don't have to be there, right, uh, to manage the software. The software does the heavy lifting, the software does the work. So now if I sell subscription software to a business, they're paying me a couple hundred dollars a month for uh, to utilize the software that allows them to chat with customers using chat widgets or allows them to send text messages to customers with SMS marketing or send emails with email marketing and, and, and on and on. And, and then they're paying month to month for that. And, you know, and you collect that month to month income from businesses. And again, the software runs by itself. You don't have to do much of anything and you collect a check every month. So, you know, the idea of selling software to businesses really appealed to me. And so, uh, you know, but the, here's the thing, you know, uh, it, it all sounds great, but how do you get customers? How do you get clients? You know, and this is where people sort of get stuck, right? And one of the things about sales that people need to realize is that there's three ways to sell. There's prospecting, there's uh, marketing, and there's networking. The best way to sell out of all three of those things is networking. Because leads that come in through networking called referrals are much easier to close um, and they're, they're more likely to pay more and not uh, give you price objections, right? Because there's this added trust factor in there. So you really want to focus on referrals, getting as many referrals as you can. Now, referrals are tricky, right? Um, because you got to know people and they got to trust you. They got to send people your way and it's tough. Uh, but that's where the book comes in, right? And so a book makes you easier to refer, you know? And um, so when people read that book, they view you as an expert, it builds trust. And that book was uh, given to them for free by someone they knew, liked, and trust. And so when people reach out to you from uh, reading your book, um, it's already like, it's, it's a, they've already been pre-sold, so to speak, because of the, the book did the selling for you, so to speak. So it's the ultimate sales tool, so to speak. And um, so uh, I, I sort of stumbled upon this. It took me a long time to, to get to this point. Uh, so a lot of people listening to this are, are getting the shortcut, so to speak. <laughs> but, um, you know, I always tell people B to B will set you free and um, just understand that. <laughs> So um, that's uh, so that's basically where I'm at right now.
um, you know, selling software to businesses and, and businesses are able to uh, use the software to, to make more money without having to spend a ton of money on marketing, on ads, on SEO. Um, this is low cost software that helps them to, to get business. So it, it's, a, it's a great product. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about indeed. That's what I'm talking about indeed. B to B will set you free. Get paid. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> they say one day we'll be free. That'll happen when you get paid. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Yes. I'm glad that that made it through. Yes. <laughs> apologize for the shaky uh, Wi Fi I have here at home. Yes. Hey, it's all good. Time recording. This is like a tail in the prime time hour. So folks are going to be extra bandwidth users. They're going to be using all the bandwidth. They're going to get the whole metaphorical part of all the bandwidth. Indeed, indeed. So my goodness, man, my goodness. So what helps you to get the confidence to finally press the publish button? Like what was your whole process of from start to finish of finally writing the book and then getting it out there. And finally, now we get to promote it now and market it consistently. Well, um, uh, this is a great question. And so I, I set a goal and which is so important. You want to uh, put down a date that you want to get this book done. You know what I mean? And that's so important. And then I, I set a plan. I said that, you know, these one or two days, I'm going to write a full chapter and get it done. I was going to do a chapter by chapter. And uh, for each chapter, I had to do my research. Uh, so I went on Google, I, I read a lot of business articles on the, the subject of each chapter. And, um, you know, I, I used a lot of information that I read and researched and obviously put it in my own words. And uh, so I banged out a, a chapter a day uh, or every two days. And then over time, uh, I saw that I had a book. I will. First, I had to write the introduction chapter and then the conclusion, wrapping things up and this and that and the other thing. It's a short, fast read. It's a little over 100 pages. And, um, you know, I was so happy with what I accomplished. And so uh, my sister, who is also a, a published author, she really helped me out a lot. She gave me a lot of advice and uh, gave me a book to read. And uh, her book is great. It's about Haiti and the different department zones in Haiti. And uh, so essentially, um, you know, what I did was I, I utilized the Amazon KDP uh, system that they have. Um, but based on the advice I got from my uh, sister and the book that she gave me, um, I had to get a graphic designer. I found a, a good one who lives in Pakistan um, through Fiverr.com, which is a great website. Uh, it wasn't too expensive. Uh, so he helped to do the formatting and helped to, to create the book cover at the back and the, the spine and, and this, that, and the other thing. Um, so he was very helpful. And then once I got, you know, all that going, the manuscript, it was an easy process with Amazon. Uh, wasn't hard at all. Um, I, it didn't cost any money to, to get it uh, published on Amazon. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's selling on Amazon and it's uh, the uh, Amazon KDP, it's print on demand. So you don't have to spend a lot of money on um, buying lots of copies of the book. Whenever someone orders a copy of the book, it's printed on demand and it's shipped right out to them. So that's a, it's a great concept. I think the Japanese were the, the first who came up with this idea of, of you know, creating something only when someone buys it. So it's, it's amazing. And so, um, you know, but then um, I don't really uh, promote the book uh, on Amazon. I try to promote the book myself through my website. Um, I have it on Amazon so people can see it there. So it gets more exposure. You know, I, my understanding is that 50% of all books are sold on Amazon. So you want to have your book on Amazon no matter what. Uh, but I mainly uh, promote it on my website. Um, and uh, people have a promo code. Um, I could ship it out to them for free, an autographed copy. Uh, so that's something people can keep in mind. And uh, like I mentioned before, you know, if if folks say, uh, say they, they know Dom, uh, <laughs> they could come onto my website and get the book for free. Um, I, I think the promo code they, they would have to put in would be DOM22. So uh, that would be D-O-M-2-2. And then, you know, if you go on my website, you can get a free uh, copy of the book and um, I, I would ship it out to you. So just want to throw that out there. And uh, so that's um, mainly the book writing process. 
uh, in a nutshell. You know, now obviously Amazon KDP is not the only game in town. Um, there's other ways to uh, self-publish, uh, but that's the way that I use, and that's you know uh, that's what I'm familiar with. So uh, that was pretty much the process in a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, so cashews or almonds? <laughs> cashews or almonds um i would take cashews uh my man that's what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah. there we go that's right indeed <laughs> when it's in a nutshell better be a cashew <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yeah. yes indeed yes indeed so my goodness my goodness so with all the wonderful podcasts you've been able to be a guest side of the game on is there a question that you wish Host would ask you more often? Uh, sure. Well, um, the questions that you've given me have been beyond amazing. So uh, this is a tough one. Um, so, you, you know, I would say, uh, you know, I would suppose, you know, life lessons, um, you know, and what's one of the most important things that I've learned in life? You know, I can mention a few things uh, that I've learned that would really appeal to people. Uh, that would really help people out. Um, I suppose to answer this question, I would say that you have to know yourself and, um, and you have to know others. So, um, and that's so important. So, and you have to keep learning about things in general to succeed. When it comes to knowing yourself, you have to realize that there are, there are basically four basic per personality types and um, what they call DISC. Uh, you might be familiar with it. You know, I learned about it years ago, but I didn't really care for it. But then I realized that there's a lot of truth to it. And it also helps you to sell better when you know someone's personality type and you can match it and find out what drives them. You know, there's a, a sales book by a gentleman named Ron Stickler that uh, I really love. It's probably one of the best, if not the best, I would say one of the best sales books that I've read. And he talks about how there's, you know, those four basic personality types. You need to know what personality type you are, what combination. And you need to know the strengths and weaknesses of your personality. You also need to know your own individual strengths and weaknesses that we all have. And you have to work on it and improve, you know, and be able to take criticism and understand that you're not perfect. And we all have flaws, but to work on those flaws. And, and, but you also have to know others, you know, be able to understand the people that you're dealing with. Uh, because obviously, um, you know, you have to deal with people in order to succeed. Uh, one of the things I've learned in life is that the number one key to success is other people. Now, let me explain myself, you know, to succeed in life, you have to know others and others have to know you, you know, um, when you have a wide network, you, you know more about opportunities. Um, this was talked a lot in the book, uh, Never uh, never Eat Alone. Um, you know, he learned that successful people had really strong networks. So there is something to that. I also read another book called The Luck Factor by Richard Wiseman, who said that it studies lucky people. And when, what they found was that people who are lucky tend to be extroverts. So they know a lot of people. So they know a lot, you know, they know more about opportunities like, you know, job opportunities and whatnot. So um, the second uh, way that um, other people help you succeed is that people help push you, you know, when you have someone holding you accountable, when someone is coaching you, when someone could point out things you're doing wrong and give you that tailored feedback that a book can't. And, you know, someone who can motivate you, can inspire you, can encourage you. You know, they say that if you hang out with four millionaires, you'll be the fifth one, right? If, you, if you're overweight and you hang out with skinny you know, or fit people, you're gonna, you have no choice but to lose weight. There, there is something to that, that um, if you really wanna succeed in life, you gotta hang out with the right people. And uh, it, it, you gotta get yourself in the right environment with the right kind of folks. Um, and you have no choice but to succeed. So that would be the second reason. And the third reason why other people help you uh, to be successful in life is that when you have a wide, when you have a tribe of folks, you know, it's easy to sell things. Uh, look at, um, uh, you know, Kylie Jenner, you know, she, 
she has um, one of the largest Instagram followings in all of Instagram. And she came up with this makeup line and it debuted and it sold out within a few days and she became a, uh, a good billionaire, you know, or very wealthy, right? And, and the reason why she was, that was possible is because she had a, a large network of people to sell stuff to, to monetize. So, you know, we live in this era where you can build a tribe, where you can have a large following, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's an email list, whether it's YouTube. And if lots of people know you and you have that large audience, it's easy to monetize. So that's another way that, you know, people can lead to your success. So I always tell people all the time that the, key, the number one key to success is other people, you know, and um, it's so important uh, that people fully understand this concept and, and implement in their own lives. Uh, that's right indeed, that's right indeed. That's right, I can tell us the reason why Jen Glass had us linked up. That's right indeed, because we align. We align indeed on that one indeed. That's right indeed. So my goodness, so if you're a wonderful book, grow your business with software. If it was a food, what would it be and why? This is tough. I'm going to say if it were food, maybe I would make it uh, one of my favorite foods. This is going to sound so terrible, but um, I actually really do like fried chicken. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to go with fried chicken. Um, if you want me to name a company, maybe I'll say KFC, uh, but I'll say it would be fried chicken because that's one of my favorite foods. If, if I think it, it's actually my favorite food. Yeah. Along with cashews. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> funny enough, I think you're the first one to say fried chicken, funny enough. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Fried chicken universal, baby. I'm telling you. It's right indeed. That Miss Universal be like, hey, it's so greasy. It's so good though. Like, sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I I uh it's 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 definitely my favorite. So my goodness, coming down to the magical question every guest gets to receive. And that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're 25 again, but you're still in 2022, what advice would you give to yourself? Wow, I love this question so much. If I were 25, uh, to, starting tomorrow and it's 2022, I would try to, I would do things very differently. Um, I would try to um, be more extroverted, hang out with more people, but hang out with the right type of people. I think I made a bad choice of friendships uh, growing up and I would try to get involved with the right kind of people. And, um, you know, and just hang out with them, uh, stay with them. Like I said, the number one key to success is other people. Looking back on my life, I think I, I spent too much time to myself being introverted and only having a, a close circle of people I hung out with, but I should have hung out with way more people. If I could do college all over again, I would have been more social. I would have been, you know, hanging out with all types of people. Um, and uh, I think that is, um, I think the bi the biggest takeaway, uh, the biggest thing I would have changed was just being around, around more people, and there were and also some bad habits I would have changed as well, uh, and would have dropped. Um, but definitely the number one thing is I would have hung out with more people, and I would have been far more social. Sweet, we well, heard that right folks let's right hang out with more people let's right indeed hang out with the right people too no less indeed it's right indeed because if you hang out with more idiots and idiots and smart people you might gravitate towards the morons so so definitely <laughs> <laughs> definitely avoid the morons as much as possible that's right indeed i know it's hard if you're driving but avoid it <laughs> yeah oh man so my goodness, those who need to metaphorically hang out with my man, the legendary Logan Deed, and keep up with all the stuff that you're doing and be able to look out for more books from yours truly. What's the best way for folks to do so? Sure. So um, if they want to get a copy of my book, uh, there's a link they click on. Um, and I'm sure it'll be in the show notes, but just a, a, a quick link they can go to that they, they'll redirect to a page where they can buy the book. Uh, would be bizthunder.us. Um, just only put bizthunder.us, nothing else, and it'll redirect to the page where you can get the book. Now, um, if you'd like to buy the book, 
it's uh, $9.99 plus shipping. Uh, but if you're a friend of Dom, you're a fan of the show, um, you get to you know, get the book mailed out to you for free, autographed, of course. All you have to do is plug in that promo code DOM22, that's D-O-M-2-2, plug in that promo code. And uh, again, the, the link is just pure biz thunder.us that's b-i-z-t-h-u-n-d-e-r dot u-s biz thunder dot u-s and it'll redirect and uh all you gotta do is plug in that promo code and uh when you check out with the shopping cart dom 22 sweet well there you have it folks get over to biz thunder dot u-s baby he's bringing the thunder that's right indeed that luke thunder that's right indeed that's right indeed that luke thunder indeed that luke cage thunder indeed that's right that's right indeed coming through in that biz thunder baby that's right to the u.s to help you grow your business baby that's right indeed man it's gonna help your business grow like a tree giving positive shade to people in the suburb baby that's right indeed that's right indeed <laughs> send over to his magical site we're gonna put a link to that in the show notes and be sure to subscribe to his show as well we're gonna put a link to that too in the show notes as well so you can get that good content in your brain in between your ears indeed my friends that's right indeed so my goodness any parting words before we close up shop my friend Absolutely. So um, I wanted to thank you all for listening to this episode and, and listening to, to me speak. And, um, um, you know, obviously, I'd love for you to check out the book. And so you can get your, you know, obviously go get your free copy. And I, I guess if I were to have a final send off, it, I just want to repeat what I said before, the number one key to success is other people. And, you know, try to know yourself as, as strongly as possible your strengths and weaknesses, and, um, you know, try to go to people and tell them, hey, what am I doing wrong? What, what should I improve on? And don't be sensitive about it. You know, take the criticism, take the feedback. Um, criticism's key in order to improve and to get better because there's so many things people want to tell you, but they may be too scared to do that. But you, you have to listen to it because uh, it's, it's only going to make you better. And so you want to work on yourself as much as possible and try to understand other people as much as possible. But remember, the number one key to success is other people. You know, having other people, again, coach you, hold you accountable, tell you what you need to work on again. So always remember that. Thank you. Thanks a bunch for tuning in and setting aside some of your time to listen to this wonderful podcast, Going North. If you really enjoyed what you heard, do me a solid and share this with your network and someone that you care about that would get something out of it too. 